After an eight-month campaign to create suspicion and distrust of Principal Abdul Muhammad, CPS officials abruptly removed him as Lynn Bloom's principal. The evidence suggests CPS official Kelly Tarrant, with the blessing of her superiors, weaponized the CPS law department to launch an unethical, one-sided investigation aimed at smearing Muhammad's name and convicting him without any credible evidence. Here, for the first time, you will hear from Mr. Muhammad himself in the first of a series of videos produced to share the evidence contradicting the claims of CPS officials and to expose a problematic faction of CPS teachers. The 7th of, 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 of July, he came into the school. The very first thing he did was he requested an audit. A financial audit. A financial audit on mm -hmm. the 7th of July. It was August 1st. I went back through the emails. You started the process Absolutely. on the 7th because when I and Miss Ayala showed up at the school mm -hmm. on August 7th, July you 7th. had the spreadsheet right. and you had started highlighting some inconsistencies. Right. Um, we had several instances where uh, teachers were doing inappropriate fundraisers. You know, we had a teacher that had money in her personal bank account. Um, for example, uh, CPS does not allow GoFundMe. There was a teacher doing a GoFundMe. In the middle of class. Right. And so, my, so again, I'm not trying to come in to berate teachers. I'm not trying to come in trying to get people fired. I'm walking in the door. So what I did was when I found out, when it, when it came to me, I had to deal with it. So... The teacher that had to go fund me, I sat down with that teacher, with the clerk. Um, I had that teacher to identify all the money that was raised, all the money that was spent, because he was spending the money as he was raising the money. Right, I'm not making this up. So we documented all of that, and we put everything in a folder, just so because I wanted to show transparency. And then I shared that information with uh, the network chief, um, and I also put it in uh, Aspen as an incident, right? Uh, when I found out about the teacher that had the money in her personal bank account, I did the same thing. I sat down with the teacher. I let the teacher know you cannot have money from a fundraiser in your personal bank account. So that teacher wrote a check to the school for the amount of money. And we created another folder where it can be transparent with like that because, you know, uh, with the, the password to get in to whatever that account was. Uh, so these were these were like like super red flags, right? Um, you know that I was dealing with. So there was resistance. You would think that somebody who just didn't write you up and let you get fired, that people would be like, "Look, you know, I you know I preach," but the fact that I was even addressing what was clearly in violation of CPS policy just led to more resistance to me. Do you, do you think that part of the issue <clears throat> is that when there was no principal? Teachers kind of ran the school, and then somebody is coming no, in. No, let me, let me stop you. When there was Alan Mather, when there was Wayne Beavis, it was understood that there are a lot of liberties are going to be given to these teachers. They're little privileged people, and they are due these privileges. When money was taken home and put in one's account, that's called theft. So coming in the door of Limbloom, all I was trying to do was put structures in place that wouldn't get everybody fired, including myself, right? And so because I was putting those structures in place, uh, you had teachers that were offended. Um, and, you know, you, some of the teachers of, who, whose actual jobs I saved. What are the names of these people? <laughs> I'm serious, what are the names of these people? Uh, I don't know, brother. Uh, See, this, I ask, this is why I ask. Even after these people, came after you and your job, you're still protecting them. But that's him. But that, that, and that, that's and, him. and that is, we, we, We've always we said have that. said over and over and over, Mr. Muhammad, please, please let us know. Let us run interference. But you know, even in the meetings, I've even made a statement. I said, you know what? And I've told some teachers um, directly in the hallways that we've been discussing matters. I said, you know what? I said, I don't care what you feel about this gentleman. I said, he has never thrown anyone under the bus. Never. All the situations that he's just discussed, he has never thrown anyone 
under the bus even when they come and attack him during the meetings that we have. You're even doing for them said. what CPS management should be doing for, for you, you when you actually do make a mistake, right? right? You, don't want, you didn't launch a full-scale investigation and call HR. You, as a supervisor, sat down with them and tried, knowing that they probably hadn't been taught the right way to right, do absolutely. things. Right. They could have been fired for it, but you know these people haven't been taught the right, right way. So you sit down with them and teach them the right way. And they you make a mistake. They get the OIG, they get the law department, they get the Office of Network Supports to come in and investigate every single thing. Right. And no one sits down with you no. to go over or try and help you with whatever this mistake and, and was or could be. Muhammad did report the teacher to La Rosa, but La Rosa did not recommend any discipline. Despite the fact that these teachers had no problem directing false attacks at Principal Abdul Muhammad, Muhammad himself seemed to operate with the default of correcting people rather than punishing them. Even after having his livelihood snatched away by CPS officials with the aid of these teachers, Muhammad's first instinct was to protect those teachers from the worst of the outrage that would result if the public really understood how far they sunk to smear his name. Eventually, we were able to convince Muhammad to name names on camera, and the first name was Christina Davis. The third incident was dealing with our um, financial incident was dealing with our um, sporting events. So it was football season. Uh, so uh, I'm leaving the school one day and I hired a person who was a um, retired athletic director. And the reason I hired that person is because uh, any principal knows that there's three areas that um, principals will get in trouble, special education, uh, the other area is finance, money. So I hired an operations manager to deal with the money. Lim Bloom has 1,400 students, never had an operations manager. The clerk was doing all of all of that. So the clerk was doing all the operations manager stuff, and it wasn't being done efficiently. And then the third area where principals really get messed up is in athletics, because if you don't have a really good, strong athletic director, then all types of stuff like we saw at Lincoln Park and other schools, those things right. can happen. So I came in the door knowing the three areas that, uh, w you know, are areas that principals need uh, good people in. So I didn't know the athletic director there, but I had a, a colleague that I worked with for like 25 years who's retired and was the athletic director. So I brought him on as uh, just an advisory role. So I'm walking out of the school one day in September and he just casually says to me, did you see, did you get the report of the money from the homecoming football game? And if he wouldn't have said, I would have never asked for the report. So uh, I think the next day I asked for the financial report from the homecoming football game. And I didn't get it that I got it maybe within a couple of days. Right. But then I asked for the reports for all the previous games where we sold tickets and I never got a financial report for it, right? The money was not being turned in. The money from the uh, football games was not being turned in. And the athletic director had the money and didn't turn it in. So I, where was the money? It, the money was in her bank account. There you go. All of this is in September. Like, we're not even, the school year just started. So all of this is coming out in September as, I, as I'm walking in the door. So uh, I meet with the athletic director. She says to me, and I have the clerk there because the clerk didn't give me a report. The athletic director didn't give me a report. I didn't get any report from any game until I requested it for homecoming. Then I requested all the previous ones. So I, I asked her, I said, well, where is the money? She says, well, you know, I came to the game and I brought my own bank to give change. And because I brought my own bank, I just took, I said, okay. And I'm trying to explain to her, I said, okay, well, if you brought your own bank and you sold one ticket for $5, that $5 sh still should have been turned in. And I asked the clerk, was any money turned in? The clerk is like, no money was turned in. So the athletic director at that time, and I have the emails, leaves the meeting still saying, that that's her money, that's my money because I brought this money to give change, that's my money. That was on a Friday. She emails me Saturday and says, 
I understand what you're saying. In so many words, I have the money for you on Monday from the game. So she brings some. I, I don't know. Like, I can't verify because there's no records. I can't like you can give me ten dollars and say this is all we sold. So I can't verify because there's no records to verify. So the athletic director, Christina Davis, puts school funds in her personal bank account and then tries to argue that she should keep all of the money because she used her own personal money to give change. A 10-year-old child knows that if she brings $200 to a game to give change for ticket sales and she ends up with $914, then $714 should go back to the school. So there's only two conclusions we can come to. This teacher either attempted to get away with stealing money from a school fundraiser or she doesn't possess an understanding of math that we could reasonably expect from a 10-year-old. What we have to understand is that this person who appears to have stolen money from a CPS school and then got upset with the principal for putting procedures in place to prevent her from stealing more money from that same school is one of the key witnesses that CPS officials like Kelly Tarrant and Devin LaRosa used to railroad and smear the name of the only person who seems to have any integrity in this entire scenario. When we surveyed Lim Bloom parents about Muhammad, LaRosa's boss, Felicia Sanders, sent out two desperate emails to discourage parents from completing our survey. Sanders is not the only high-level official implicated in this plot. The fact that three different CPS departments were involved in the scheme indicates that Muhammad was targeted by someone who could direct all three offices. The only official in the chain of command for all three of these departments is the CEO, Pedro Martinez. Several of Martinez's subordinates maligned the black principal who was enforcing their policies while they emboldened the white teachers who were breaking their policies. This isn't the first time these officials have railroaded and smeared the good name of a principal and upended an entire school community in the process. What was done at Lindblom was done at Dunbar to Principal Gerald Morrow, was done at Tubman to Principal Kimberly Gibson, at Leland to Principal Jamika Nelson, and to at least six black principals in the last nine months. It seems as if CPS management was in such a rush to get rid of as many black principals as possible that they got sloppy and left a trail. That trail is filled with evidence of unethical, immoral, unconstitutional, and illegal attacks, not just on principals, but on their schools. We have to unite behind Muhammad and all the other principals who were targeted by these officials. Then we have to launch a campaign to hold the perpetrators accountable. It starts with La Rosa, Williams Ford, and Tarrant, and it ends with the CEO himself. Thank you for watching. There's a lot more to come.